Welcome back, and you probably noticed we were talking during the during the break, and because it's such an interesting uh, subject. Now, you have some information because th this topic is why proper treatment is so important. But I know you have. We talked about brain scans for a segment. We did, and I'd like to come back to that, uh, and also because everybody was talking about the frontal lobe and executive function. Yes. So I'd like to actually apply that to what is that? I'm going to give you a real concrete thing. We've, we've got our brains here. I see Elena's carrying my other part of my brain. <laughs> um, this is a brain model. It's actually modeled from a, from a real human brain. Uh, and I, I bring this up whenever I talk to people because the place of uh, that I want people to think of is the frontal lobe, this piece of meat that you have right here at the front of your forehead. Right. And it's, it's just critical. And the frontal lobe develops significantly over the course of childhood and adulthood. Uh, and the other thing about the brain that's really fascinating is people used to think, well, if you've got it, you've got it, and if you don't, you don't. We know this is not true. Right. There is a, right. uh, a concept called neuroplasticity. And I think that uh, this is an amazing uh, development in brain science, is that uh, you can teach an old dog new tricks. You can unlearn or you can create new neural pathways that lead to more adaptive behaviors. And this is true in any mental health condition, but right. especially true in ADHD. So I always talk about the frontal lobe. And if I could have the first slide of the brain scan, I'd like to talk about that. Okay, yeah, they'll be up in, they'll be up in just a minute. This is, this is a scan that actually was uh, done about 20 years ago by a famous researcher, Zmetkin. Mm -hmm. uh, and it shows a slice of the frontal lobe. So we're, we're talking about that that front part of the brain, uh, and it's been, it's, these were people between the ages of 17 and 21, they were put into a PET scanner, and the PET scanner measured how quickly the brain metabolized glucose. Oh. Glucose is the only food source your brain can use. So the brain on the left that says no ADHD shows a brain of somebody in the brain scanner who's doing a math problem. And you can see it's kind of orange, yellow, and, and pink. It's a hot functioning brain. These cells in the frontal lobe are working. They're, bur they're burning energy and they're, they're being recruited. The brain on the right side is an ADHD brain. It is green and more blue, it's doing the same math problems, but not recruiting that frontal lobe. This has been confirmed in many subsequent studies. Uh, one of the very fascinating follow-up studies showed that when you took the brain on the right and you treated that brain pharmacologically, in other words, you turned on dopamine and those synapses in the frontal lobe, it started to look like the brain on the left. You actually That's could turn it on. Yeah. In fact, after six months of treatment, they also showed in children that the thickness of the cortex, which is the outer rim of brain, was thickened by 10% with treatment. So treatment actually increased the weight of the cortex of the frontal lobe. This was absolutely phenomenal research. Um, if I could have slide number two, please. I'm yeah. gonna show you that inside the brain, we have these brain cells, neurons, and the neurons, I've got a little one here, one of my little stuffy neurons that I bring into my uh, exam room, uh, but you'll see on the next uh, graphic, the next slide number two, uh, we have the picture of, uh, of uh, what a, a nerve cell looks like in the brain, a neuron, and you can see how the projections come up, the dendrites, mm -hmm. and they touch onto other brain cells. This is how our brain communicates. And when we think of something or we do something, we are actually using multiple brain cells in a very certain connection or network, a neural network, and that is a thought, a concept, an action, a belief. Right. So, for instance, riding a bike may recruit 100,000 neurons, but in a very distinct pattern, and we learn it, um, just like everything else, like learning some of our organizational skills. Right, it's like so a well-tread path, that's so we right. make it deeper and deeper, and the more we that's do right. it, the more the likely more we do it. We can do it again so easily. The treatment yeah. turns on those connections with dopamine. So when we use a stimulant medication, kind of an oxymoron, people say, why are you giving my hyperactive right. kid a stimulant? Mm -hmm. What we're doing is we're actually turning on the sleepy frontal lobe. And this actually increases what the child already has and maximizes the use of the frontal lobe. Right. If and I could have the next slide. Well, actually, actually just we're, we're just, we're just yep. about mm -hmm. at the mm -hmm. end of the program. Oh, so well, okay. so what you said is, is great, but, I, but in mm -hmm. terms of this 
So t proper treatment, you're saying proper can treatment. Make huge, uh, right. huge Right, it decreases, you know, we showed you the graph before, and it decreases your risk of everything once you get treatment. The behavioral treatment is really important, as well as the pharmacological option. Um, and the thing with cognitive behavioral therapy, it's all about creating those paths, those synapses, right. and really ingraining new patterns. So instead of old thoughts that used to stop you from doing things, we can actually reprogram then and make you have instinctively new thoughts that then can actually move things along and spurt dopamine, the thing you need to focus. So we can change these things, and, that's and the actually, biggest thing. And actually what I'm going to say is what we said at the beginning, so is it a lot of hype ADHD? Well, the answer is no, it's not. Not a lot of hype. And, mm -hmm. and I would like to thank both of you and everyone else for coming today tonight. I think this has been really interesting. And that's it for the program. And thank you for watching. Now next week we'll be discussing arts and activism and that's with James Gordon and Georgia Sims and I know you'll, you'll uh, hopefully call in and uh, tweet us about that and we'll look forward to seeing you then. Good night.